Hi there everyone, this is Sir Edmund Halley. He's who we're talking about today, and he's a real giant here at the Royal Society, but he's probably most famous to people like you and me for the comet that bears his name, Halley's Comet. Now you probably think that's what we're gonna be talking about, but today we wanna to talk to you about a very different aspect of Edmund Halley and his science. And to do that, we're gonna be going downstairs to meet Keith in the vaults, so let's go. Okay, so now we're down in the basement, here in the stacks, as you call it in the industry. We, we do indeed, yes. Called the stacks, with all these stacks of books. And if we just have a quick look here, we'll just show you... I mean, this whole book is Edmund Halley's work. This is all of Edmund Halley's papers as they were sent to the Royal Society. across the main, Yeah, and across the many, many subjects he was interested in. It looks like just on the side here, he's done a bit of working out and he's adding things up. I love the thought that someone like Edmund Halley, this kind of giant of science and mathematics, is still doing, adding things up like me when I was a schoolboy. This is what I would expect to see from Edmund Halley. But you're going to spring something different on me today. What have you got? Well, how about Edmund Halley, salt dog and sea captain? <laughs> salt dog and sea captain. What have you got? All right. You're going to have to show me that. Let's move this one out of the way. What have you got? Right. Well, you will know Brady very well, the story of how Principia was almost not published. So Principia, this is Isaac Newton's mm. seminal work, and Newton wasn't going to do anything with it, basically. That's right. So Halley persuaded him to publish this thing. However, uh, the Royal Society, which was going to publish it, ran out of money. The reason it ran out of money is because it had published Francis Willoughby's History of Fishers the year before, mm. and it very nearly made the organisation go bust. So Halley ended up paying for most of Principia going through the press. So Halley basically realised this was an amazing thing and needs to be published, and he said, I'll stump up the cash. Exactly right. So one would have expected him to be heartily tired of fish by that time. The Royal Society, which must have felt mightily guilty about all this, paid him back with copies of Francis Willoughby's Fishers. <laughs> so this book, this fish book, which I've never heard of, mm, it's uh, not like a great book or anything. It's... It's, it is a great book. We'll, we'll see it one of these days, okay. Brady. However, uh, then Halley goes on to his next career as a sea captain. He commands three voyages of discovery in the Atlantic, primarily to look at magnetic observations and to do some charting. But lo and behold, he finds some fish and sends them to the Royal Society. He's like, you gave me those books of fish. Here's some fish Here's right back Here's some back for you. This is one of the fish. It says these figures were taken and drawn and given to the Royal Society by Captain Halley, uh, November the 6th, 1700. He commanded HMS Paramore. We've had Halley's Comet, now we've got Halley's Fish. That's all right but surely that is not what you've brought out for us today. I'm, this is, I'm expecting something a bit more off the wall from you, Keith. Well, uh, indeed we have, uh, because of course, um, Halley wasn't just interested in specimens of fish, he wanted to look at the real thing in their proper environment. Well, so that's what we're going to look at next. In this very elderly book of rough minutes of the Royal look Society, this. this is the stuff that the secretaries would, would write and scribble down in the meetings before they were fair copied into the formal minutes, which means all the good bits got taken out, of course, all the arguments and so on. Okay. But they were doodling and scribbling as they went to try and capture some of the imagery around what was being discussed at the meeting. So here you can probably see the outline of a ship. It's sitting at the bottom of the sea, you can tell, because the wavy water line is just there. So there's the water, and there's our ship on the bottom. And, and clearly, they're trying to recover it. Well, this is my favourite, and this is, is really the thing that I wanted to show you, because it is such a rarity. Look at this. What he's trying to capture here is Halley's diving bell. And Halley did use it. He physically got into the thing, went down to the bottom of the sea, in the Thames initially, and then they did wreck recovery off the coast of England. They did this in the River Thames? Yeah, I wouldn't, but they did. <laughs> yes, presumably slightly cleaner at that time, but I wouldn't bet on it. What year is this? Well, this is like... This is 1691. And he's walking around on the bottom of the sea in one of these. That's right. He filled up the diving bell with barrels of air from the top. There was a little stopcock so you could let the bad air out. And he made himself a leather suit with a glass helmet. And we don't quite know what this is. Is it a candle in a lantern? Is it a bird to maintain the quality of the air? But yes, here is Edmund Halley walking around on the seafloor. The comet that Halley predicted would return, returned after he died. So obviously it wasn't called Halley's Comet then and he wasn't famous for that. That's right. Presumably, Edmund Halley, if he was famous for anything when he was alive, he was famous for this. 
In part, yes, and for the predictions he made, of course. But, of course, you're right, the things hadn't come back yet. The comet and the transit of Venus, just, just they, they hadn't happened. So it's his other scientific work that his contemporaries would have recognised him for. And hopefully not that picture. <laughs> Go on, everyone's going to want to know. I think a copy went for auction at about a quarter of a million pounds, something like that. So. Quarter of, of a the, million? Of, of the three-volume set. These had better right. be good pictures, Rupert. This is one of the best sets, I've been told. So.